what does it mean to be a professional artist? This is something which I've been thinking about for quite a while. Professional artist is like, I studied at a music school, and everyone I studied with, uh, in my particular class, it was a composition, learning how to write music. And um, the teachers there, they had uh, creative, they were professional artists, they were teachers, they wrote music, and there was, um, in the school we were learning how to write music. Our aspirations were to, or for many of us, become professional artists, to make a career writing music. But nobody can prepare you for becoming a professional artist because the path is not straight, the path is not predictable. If you want to become a professional engineer or an accountant or a lawyer or a doctor or a builder, there's a path. You can do some vocational training, you can get a qualification, you get your first job, you get some experience on a job, you get a promotion, you become a manager, you become a craftsperson, you become a professional. But as an artist, that is as a musician, or a writer, or a painter, or a poet, a piano player, a drummer, there is no straight line path. Um, and there is a difference between creative careers and non-creative careers. Now I'm, I'm going to be um, fairly brutally, I'm going to set a definition here. A creative career is where you are creating something in a way, doing something which is, uh, I don't have a good, good easy definition, but it's like the kind of things that people often do as a hobby. Um, there are some people that might do accounting as a hobby, or they might consider law a hobby, or they might build things as a hobby on the side. But we can kind of see clearly that um, a lot of these these vocational skills, they only work in the marketplace, in jobs, in companies where people need these things to be done for them, so they pay for them. But some things, like uh, music, art, painting, poetry, it doesn't make us clothed, it doesn't help us like, it's not, it's not the same as food, shelter and all those things that we consider fundamental to existing, but life is more than just existing with food and shelter. So art, the creative professions, sometimes they fall outside of like what we need to survive. And so in times of trial, times of struggle, often these things are the first to go. Like um, in wartime, people might stop indulging in music, painting, art, as much because they need to survive. But what about professional, so, so about professional artists, like um, suppose that we are, here we are now. I would like, I know we're in COVID time and like we're in lockdown and lots of people's workplaces have been shut down and a lot of people aren't thinking about art or music or maybe we are, maybe that's what keeps us going during these times. But um, the point of this kind of mini rant is to say that creative careers, life as an artist, a professional artist, it's not a straight line in this world like a uh, like being a lawyer or a doctor or an accountant or an engineer. So I'll differentiate these between being like having uh, a, prof a vocation. I, I don't know how to put it down to one word. I guess I just say like a normal job versus a creative job. And or just creative. I mean, lots of normal jobs are creative, like being an architect or whatever. But artist like your job is to make things you want to make things beautiful um, me myself I have a normal job it's somewhat creative I can do some creative things with that but it's just a very normal job where I provide work for the marketplace and I get paid for it so pro 
professional artist. The main thing, I want to explore this more in more talks. My personal experience, like I came out of music school and I made coffee as a barista. I roasted coffee at home. I rented commercial equipment. Um, uh, where I am now, um, I don't want to go down too many different rabbit holes. Over these chats, we'll get well and truly into what I've been thinking about, what I've been doing, what I want to do in the future. But for this, for the purpose of this medium, this um, these videos, this one's going to be uploaded to YouTube, potentially Facebook. But um, basically, it's like, I've noticed that um, in the world of business, running a business, it's like an organization with lots of cogs and pieces and um, everyone does their bit and the thing churns out enough, it brings in enough money to pay everybody their salary and then have profit for the shareholders. These machines, businesses, I think that artists often um, are left out of, understand you know, you, no matter what your, how your path is as a professional artist, you do need to understand how these music businesses work because or these creative artistic businesses work because there's a normal business person at the top with all these different jobs being done and one of these gears that turns and produces profit is an artist. The artist does work just like everybody else, the engineer, the doctor, but their just work happens to be creative. Now, the work they do sometimes behaves the same way as commodified labor. However, the feeling of the artist is so much more tortured you put so much more emotion into the work. The work you do, you, you're so passionate about doing it. You love doing it. In fact, you're amazed that you're being paid for it. So, many people, they do this work for free. Like, uh, I don't know. A lot of people have their jobs that pays their money. And their creative work is done as, as like a hobby. I've heard this amazing story about like pottery. Pottery is suffering like this force of the market. It's amazing. It's not amazing. It's kind of, I don't know, it is what it is. Um, but there are these people who are so passionate about pottery. They love their life as pottery and they are determined to make a career out of pottery as a combination of being a pottery teacher and making pottery things like cups and saucers and B mugs and jugs, amazing pottery things, and they sell it in the marketplace. And these things are fairly high value artisanal products. But there are these other people. Now, there's a stereotype here of like an old, rich, retired person who decides they've got, they've got enough money, but they decide they want to be a craftsperson. They want to indulge the creative side they couldn't do for the last 20, 30, 40 years. And so they take a pottery class. And they dedicate their life to pottery as a vocation, patronized by their existing wealth. And so they get to make this amazing pottery. And they decide they want to legitimize their art. And so they sell it in the market. But because they don't need the money, they just sell it for whatever price. $10 a cup or a saucer, which is expensive compared to a Kmart cup. But it doesn't really pay for the pottery the clay, the time, and the labor put into the craft. So these people, these dilettantes, they devalue the craft inadvertently because they don't need the money. They're not doing it for money. They're doing it for the love of it. But as a result, this can sometimes devalue the craft and the market for those professionals who are trying to make a living out of it. Which begs the question, are people entitled to make a living out of something just because they want to do it? The market is the market. But sometimes the market is distorted by people, by hobbyists. One solution to this would be uh, a pottery union, where a band of pottery professionals who are passionate about the craft, but also making it a sustainable way to sustain themselves, they could band together and make union prices to, like, Define the price that you can sell pottery work for. And they can go to all of these uh, rich Miravale or Fendleton. I don't mean to be um, 
prejudice against those neighborhoods or Kashmir, uh, might as well say Hollywood or Bel Air um, retirees who do it as a hobbyist and they sell their pottery work. Really high quality pottery work, mind you, because they spend every day, every moment of the day in, investing into their life as an artist. And But they sell their pottery below the agreed union rate. And the stereotype is that the union thugs come along and break the legs of the um, the scabs who provide labour, the, um, they break the picket line and they provide labour below the union rate. That's meant to be an illustrative story to portray and exaggerate. It's a hyperbole. I'm not saying that every art place needs to be unionised. Unions are great. Like, um, well, they can be great. They can be destructive. They can be good. Everything's balanced. Um, in America, there's a really famous writers union which fought to advocate for more rights for professional writers. And they wield their power ruthlessly. And they, yeah, they caused some really great kind of like um, working labor carnage on a lot of TV shows by going on strike. So all the writers and the unions, they went on strike to get better rights. And they won. So that's one story about potters and writers and um, how they made made their life, their work towards their professional career. So, just to finish up, here's an image. You've got all, all work and output, like goes into the world, and. You're either operating, uh, supposing you're not a hobbyist who's just doing stuff for fun. Suppose you actually want to like put it to the world. You're either going to be a creative business upon yourself to make things and put it to the world and generate within your own music business or, or creative business. Or you're going to partner up with an existing business and you will be a cog in their machine. Now that's a very ruthless analogy. You being a cog, no one likes to be a cog, if, especially if you're an artist. But you either contribute to someone else's machine who generates income, or you become an income generating machine within yourself where you run your own mini business, where you do your own sales and sell to the marketplace. And perhaps some of your customers are businesses, like in the case of um, um, Britney Spears. Um, wasn't meant to be a topical example, but, or Justin Bieber, any, or Ariana Grande, they will be an independent artist but operating themselves as a business to contribute to other businesses so there might be a big label that they contribute to so you've got to decide to how much of your work is going to be a machine yourself where you make and create and publish and get income and how much do you just make and create within a bigger organization to publish within their world to provide them with content and then they generate revenue are you going to be a YouTuber, being a cog in YouTube's money machine? Or are you going to be, I don't know, it's impossible to not operate with other machines, but um, that's my analogy. I hope that made sense. Um, leave a comment down below about um, what do you want me to talk about in terms of being a professional artist? Do you have questions or things that you're interested in or even anecdotes? Leave them down below, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.